overcome the world, to overcome challenges to God. And Bible begins to characterize our life for daily living, not necessarily by laying on our hands, but by us doing the word and then the victory comes from that. Now, the head group is the group of fathers. These are people who have matured and they have seen victories in their lives and now they are in a position to reproduce to uh, father other people to give birth to other children in the Lord to take to assume responsibility in terms of leading others in the knowledge of God. Now we are very blessed now before we understand these other stages because they are very crucial. The sons and the fathers are they people who make war, who make things happen, who run with a vision. Um, so it is extremely important. But we must first understand childhood and we must understand the, the, the importance. We must first understand that childhood um, is the starting point. It's a place where we all begin. But at the same time, we need to understand that we are not supposed to remain in childhood. We need to grow up, we need to um, come out of the childish things. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 18, verse number 11, uh, the Bible has something to say. Paul talks there about um, Paul talks about a time when he wants the child. He says, when I was a child, meaning that the apostle Paul was once a child in the Lord. Even the apostle Paul was a saint where he knew nothing except that he saved by grace. And then that is all. He thought that even the battles comes across uh, along the way. They are just going to, God is just going to bring lightning from heaven and then everything falls down and then it's over. But later, as he grew up, as he grew up, he began to realize, hey, even though Jesus did it all, but we still fight. Even though we do not fight with flesh and blood, but we still fight with spiritual things. It is why we are people wanting to say, I have run the race of glory. We have realized that this is a race, a race that I must run. It, is, it, it doesn't happen automatically. Must run the best. You know? So, even now, the apostle for us, let's see when he was a child. And when he was a child, he did the child experience. When he was still a child, he mentioned to him that everybody understands you. You do childish things. You do the things that are done by children. It's understandable. Even when you take podium to, um, to testify the best, the, the, the way you talk, some um, people remain, sometimes we give them after them, not because more than them, but we just excited to see them. That compared to what they used to be, they are something different, you know? Even though they may quote and they can misquote verses and, and perhaps say things, that are contrary to the Christian doctrine as we know it. But we understand they are children. They just came here. They don't know that. They don't know anything. You know. But we need not to remain there. So Paul, in, in the first book, in his first book, the, the Corinthian church, in his chapter, verse number 11, he talks about he living. Level of child. He said, I thought I spoke like a child. I thought like a child and I spoke like a child. And when I became a man, when I became a man, I threw away the childish things. Now, this is our point of departure today. That growth does not come automatically. You have to have a desire to grow, you have to develop a purpose. Willingness to grow. Growth does not come automatically. You must develop a desire to grow. 
for you to grow, you must understand the importance of growing. You must understand that things are no longer the same when the child and when the woman. You must get the desire to grow. Number two, in order to grow, you must be ready to sacrifice. It takes sacrifice to grow. It takes sacrifice to grow because you must put away, throw away the childish things. It is so comfortable to remain in the childish things. It is so comfortable. Comfortable, you fall in love with the childish things. And, and it is as though you can remain there for the rest of the life. And if you don't take an initiative, you can remain there for the rest of your life. You can remain a child for the rest of your life. Have you seen what children in the Lord do to the house of God? Mm. A mess things now. Create groups, divide people, start fights. You know, they do all these things. Take things that are not to be said in public and they say them in public. Um, you see, so at the end of the day, things go wrong if believers do not grow. I said yesterday, what actually makes the church to seem powerless in the days we're living in? It is not the devil, it is not the, 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 witch, the witches, it is not the demons, it is none of those things. What actually makes the believers, that makes the body of Christ to seem powerless? It is the childish things that we refuse to leave and put away. That, that tendency to refuse to grow, refusing to grow up, is the number one problem. Imagine if, let me make an example, when you go to the book of churches, we find that Gideon took a few men. And the Bible says he went to war with this man. And the Bible goes on to say each man was in his position. Now listen. Each man was in his position. Meaning that each man was in his honor, he had his own part that he was playing. And he was competent enough to play that part alone. He was matured, he trusted with that part alone. No one needed to do that part for them. By the time he took that position, he was sure that whatever that needed to be done in that position, this man will do it. As a result, the army won. Yes, of course, the God alone was with them. But part of the presence of God with them was obedience to what God said, the strategy that God put in place, putting every man to his position. Now, if every one of us grew, pushed their way through, desired, and made strides, to grow in the Lord to the point of knowing their position in the days of God. Knowing their position. Because we are not saved for the sake of being part of the crowd, and then that is all. But you have a role to play. You have a mission to accomplish. You have a purpose to accomplish. You have something to do, but what to do? There is a corner somewhere you are expected to keep and to make sure that things succeed. All of that happens when we grow. When we grow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse number, seven, uh, verse number 21. Romans chapter 8, Verse number 21. The 
Okay? If you got it, say amen. 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 <laughs> now it says, before the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Now let's go. 
What do you call that which is born of a horse? What is the nature of that which is born of a horse? It's a horse. Can a horse give birth to a bird? No. Come with me now. Come with me. Can a horse give birth to a lion? No. So a horse gives birth to a horse. A lion gives birth to a lion. Chicken gives birth to a snake gives birth to snake. Come on, class. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying in the day. And I can come here, but I can't feel you. Yeah? Hey, a bear gives birth to bear. And God gives birth to God. So, meaning that that nature which is within you, that which is born of God. Is God. But now, what does spiritual growth mean? It means that nature of God is still at that stage where it has not yet manifested itself. It is still at that stage where it has not really shown itself and its power and its potential. It's kept within the human body, but it's there inside. So, when you grow spiritually, you grow inside out. The powerful things, the dynamic things, the divine things that are there inside of you are growing out. Growing out to show and manifest. Now, Paul says, even nature is a, it's growing, waiting for the revelation of the sons of men. Many of us think that that scripture means the revelation of the sons of men on the last day when Jesus comes back. Huh? But actually, what it actually means is that this is this. Remember that nature also was subjected to a curse, and therefore. Because of the sin of Adam and Eve, right? And humans also were subjected to that kind of a curse as a result of the sin of Adam and Eve. Okay? Now let's go. When you go to the book of Romans, the Bible will tell you that Jesus was the second angel who liberated mankind from the curse that came with the sin of Adam. So Adam, the first Adam, according to the Bible, he, is, he brought sin, but the second Adam took away sin. Okay? The first Adam came with death, but the second Adam took away the power of death. Meaning that the nature understands that these people who are walking on top of us, who are called Christians, by the way, the name Christians is a worldly name. Mm. It was a name that was given by those who were observing the sons of God, the children of a world we call son, meaning that we have grown. Now, Nature understands these people that you know these people. Inside them, there is a nature that resembles God. In other words, there is God inside this physical body that you see. And everything that has oppressed us, everything that has kept us down, everything that has decapitated us, you know, is in the power to liberate us from death is with these people. The power of God to set us free from darkness of Adam and Eve, of Adam and Eve's sin, revealed to them because through Christ they have been liberated from that curse. 